Well, over the next few weeks, we're going to explore what it means for a Christ follower to be a part of the political process. Now, before we get started into all of this, I want you to think about your most recent conversations about all things political. Maybe it was a face-to-face -face conversation, or even more likely it was a comment you posted or reposted on social media. As you think about those moments, I want you to ask yourself, is my speech about all things political God-honoring? Is it encouraging to others? In a conversation, do I make my political points in a way that reflects well on the cause of Christ? There's a tremendous lack of civility in the world of politics today, and I think in part it's because there's a lack of civility in the church when it intersects with politics. I believe that we can do a lot better. So I'm asking you to make a decision right now to engage in those conversations about politics in a way that builds up rather than tears down. Principle number one, God is the ultimate source of authority in this world. Think for a moment about the opening statement of the Bible, Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The very first idea that the Bible wants to get across to us is that God himself is the source of life. Simply put, without God, there wouldn't be anybody or anything to govern. It's principle number two. God has established government to help us do what is right and reject what is wrong. It's his desire that government serve its citizens by bringing good into their lives. Principle number three, God judges the nations. He raises governments up and he tears them down. History tells us that governments often fail to live up to the purpose for which they were created. They don't do what is good for their citizens. They don't discourage one another. They don't encourage others to do what is right. God speaks out against this kind of failed leadership. Because God is the source of all authority, has established government, and is the judge of government, He alone is worthy of our worship and ultimate allegiance. Government can do a lot of great things. It can promote the economy by building infrastructure like roads or bridges. It can ensure its people have access to good education or health care so they can build a better life. It can use its military and its policing powers to protect the vulnerable. But even under the best of circumstances, government must always be relegated to a second place behind God himself. God is our ultimate creator, lawgiver, and judge. He alone, and not government, is ultimately worthy of all our worship. God alone and not government is ultimately worthy of all of our trust. God alone and not government is ultimately worthy of all our affections. God alone and not government is ultimately worthy of all our allegiance. But your first step in affirming God's relationship with government is to be about helping government promote good. There are a lot of ways that you can do this. First, for example, vote for the most good that you possibly can. Study the candidates, know the party platforms, do all of the homework that you can so that you elect people who will best fulfill the God-given purpose of government to do the most good. It's not always easy to do. You may not like the personality of a candidate. You may disagree with him or her on many things. You may not agree with every element of the party platform they are supposed to support but get registered to vote and then prayerfully discern which candidates will do the best job promoting good and discouraging wrongdoing. Do your research. Learn as much as you can about the candidates and their parties and then prayerfully vote. Here's another idea. Exercise your influence. You and I have the privilege of living in the capital city of the third largest state in America. We've got a level of access to decision makers that most people across the state of Florida don't enjoy. There's nothing that would prevent you or me from becoming a person of influence in this city. You can go to the Capitol as often as you would like. You can encourage lawmakers to pass laws that promote religious liberty, encourage the family, protect the weak, and take care of the vulnerable. The decision makers are in our backyard, so don't miss your providential opportunity to have influence. Here's another idea. Always give your ultimate allegiance to God. We're seeing a lot of pushback against government today. We see protests in the streets, some of which has brought horrific violence from people of all sides of the political spectrum. We see churches reacting against coronavirus restrictions by defying government and meeting without masks or social distancing. Are all these displays of defiance pointed to our government right and proper? Are some of them right? Which ones are? Which ones aren't? When should we stand up and defy our government? When should we seek other, less disruptive forms of dissent? Should we ever disagree with government? 
These are critically important questions at this time in history. As Christ followers, we should celebrate God's authority. We should celebrate His wisdom in creating government. And we should work to encourage our government to do what is right. Imagine what happens if we fulfill all of these responsibilities. I mean, our country becomes a better place for all of our citizens. I do this because I'm a new creation by the grace of God. The old in my life has passed away. and He is in my new life as ruler and king. He calls me to reflect this in my citizenship in this world. Will you join in this today? Will you commit to voting first and foremost as a citizen of heaven and then secondly as a citizen of the United States? Will you use your influence and encourage our government to do good as God intends for them to do? Will you decide now that your first allegiance will always be to God, even if that brings you to a time of great personal cost? Let's pray and ask God to give us that kind of resolve today. Dear Father, again, we thank you for this amazing country that we get to live in. And again, Lord, we are reminded every day that this country is not perfect. You have placed us in this place, in this country, for this kind of moment. You've given us the opportunity to have influence into the leadership that we live under. So, Father, help us to encourage our government. Help us to use that influence in a way that is good and healthy for our country. Dear Lord, I pray for those all over the world who find themselves as a part of the persecuted church. I pray, dear Lord, that as they have to stand against government, you allow them to bear the cost in a way that reflects the very best of who you are. And Father, we pray the same for ourselves, that should we arrive at a moment where we have to stand against our government, we do so in a way that reflects the very best of who we are in Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for the liberty that we enjoy. We thank you for the peace that we experience in this country. And we pray all of this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.